Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. What we're working with today is the latest QLC NAND SSD from Intel. This is the 665P. If it looks similar to this other guy on the table, it's almost identical in physical appearance. This was the first one, the 660P. Now what's interesting about the, the Intel QLC drives is that they front them with a little bit of SLC NAND. That gives them a little bit of cache, a little bit more resiliency for uh, the workloads to get thrown at them. Now these are designed for end user client systems, so think your thin and light notebooks, uh, small portable devices, those sorts of things, made for mainstream computing with a value first messaging. So that's why Intel's used QLC because it lets them get to that terabyte and two terabyte capacity while still maintaining a, a really good cost profile. We'll take a closer look at these here in a minute, but the terabyte drive that's up for review today is uh, in hand and, and being worked on. The two terabyte capacity will be available sometime in Q1 of this year. Now Intel launched these drives in the fall of last year. In fact, Adam Armstrong from our team was at the broader flash event that Intel hosted in South Korea. But now that we've got the terabyte drive in, just hit the lab this week, we're excited to see how it works and what its performance profile looks like compared to the 660p. All right, so we've come in tight on the drive just to give you a better look at the hardware layout. Now our 665p has its sticker on it, so it's just a little harder to see the components, but they're really laid out the same way or very similarly to the 660p, where we've got the two NAND packages, the drive RAM, and the controller over there in the corner. Now, as we noted, this is 96 layer QLC NAND for the primary storage component of the drive, but Intel also includes a little SLC uh, that's used like a cache on these drives to really protect the QLC from getting uh, too much abuse. On the terabyte drive, that's a 12 gig footprint, and on the two terabyte drive, it's a 24 gig footprint. The other thing Intel does is what they call dynamic SLC, which is a software-based uh, tool that helps the drive manage the SLC cache and lets it expand into the QLC depending on the drive activity and what you need to do. Through the Intel SSD toolbox, there are also some additional tools to help manage the SLC part of the drive. We'll look at that in a subsequent piece. So one of the big things about the drive that Intel's updated, if you consider the 665 to the 660, is endurance. This guy's gonna pick up 50% endurance over the prior version. So on the terabyte capacity, that means going from 200 terabytes written to 300 terabytes written. Of course, that's one thing, but the next big thing that they've done is they've increased the performance profile of the 665P. And even though it's targeted to mainstream computing and some of the more lightweight uh, aspects that an end user would come into, they've done a couple good things where the burst performance has jumped over 13%. So what that means is random 4K write IOPS has gone from 220,000 to 250,000. Uh, sequential 128K read has gone from 1800 megabytes a second to 2000 megabytes a second. Now whether or not an end user really feels that, that's a different debate, but we're talking about a drive that's got a nice boost in endurance, the cost has stayed about the same, it includes a five year warranty, and has uh, other features like AES 256 encryption and Pyrite 2.0 support. But what you guys care about largely is the performance. So we're gonna take this guy, mount it inside our Dell PowerEdge R740 XD and get to testing. Kevin took the drive and put it into our server for testing. Now it is an end user drive, but we like to keep our test platforms consistent. So we do test them within a, a PowerEdge R740 XD. That's why we use that adapter card for the PCIe, NVMe, anything that's an M.2 form factor. One other note on testing, with the QLC drives, we learned from the first iteration when we saw the Crucial P1 and the 660P from Intel, that our normal 5% uh, test footprint of the drive was too heavy. So as soon as you flow outside of the SLC cache on the drive and start hitting the QLC NAND, performance gets quite erratic and uh, highly inconsistent. So when we did those tests in the first round, we dropped back to 1% of uh, uh, the drive testing. And that's what we did here as well. So all of these drives are tested the same way. But if we just do some rough math, this is a terabyte drive, 1% would be 10 gig. 
and the SLC cache on this drive is 12 gigs, so we should be in good shape there. Uh, just important to remember that when we're looking at a hybrid format drive like this, that, uh, that we designed the test plan to stay uh, within the SLC cache as intended. So looking at sequential write 64K, the 665 did really well here, topping out at uh, 1,855 megabytes per second. Uh, that's a solid 250 plus compared to the, the 660 before. Uh, real strong performance. So we look at the sequential read 64K, again, the, the numbers here are even more dramatic in favor of the 665P, topping out at uh, 1,277 uh, megabytes per second. The P1 was about 600 and the 600P back at 331. Next, we'll take a look at random write 4K. Aside from the little loop-de-loop -loop that the P1 throws in there, the drives are relatively consistent uh, throughout. The 665 puts up 220K IOPS, the uh, P1 237, and the 600P 230. But again, you know, this sort of performance is in the well within the not noticeable territory for an end user. The only thing we saw that was a little bit of a negative in this four corner testing uh, was around random read 4K performance where our sample uh, really just fell off the uh, the map a little bit. It's not terrible, but uh, considering the gains we saw in the uh, sequential writes and the 64K reads, we were hoping for, for more. But on the random read, it drops off a little bit. Uh, we see the 665 coming in with 207,000 IOPS compared to the 364,000 on, uh, on the P1. Now again, you can only do so much when you're tuning a drive. You have to make uh, decisions about where you put your effort, where you adjust your firmware. And clearly as we go back and take a look at uh, the sequential writes again, where the drive did really, really well, and the sequential reads where it did exceedingly well, uh, Intel must feel like those workloads are tuned well for the end user in the systems where this drive will, will ultimately live. Now, the drive does come out at a price point as we do this review today. It's about $130 US retail for the terabyte drive. It's a little expensive given the category uh, it's competing against, like the WDSN 550 that we recently reviewed is about the same price, but a much higher performer. Uh, the thing is, for system upgraders, this may not be the number one go-to drive, but where you're going to see this show up a lot is in the value packages from Dell, from HP, from Lenovo, where they're trying to hit a price point at your retail shops of, of sub-1000, sub-900, whatever it is. And this drive is going to do really well there for mainstream end-user use cases. And it's not going to be expensive there. Intel will bundle it with their CPUs and, and make it affordable for the uh, for the systems guys to put this out in the market. So we think net net the drive's going to perform really well if you get a system with it in there you'll probably never even notice you won't be hurt by the QLC and you'll get a cost optimized system that's really pretty great for system upgraders or system integrators on a smaller scale uh, there probably are some better options until the price falls down to a uh, hundred dollars or less to, to build that gap uh, between this drive and, and better performing drives. To see more performance data, we'll have uh, the whole suite of charts in our review. We'll link to that in the YouTube uh, video description notes. And until next time, make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up with everything we're doing here at Storage Review.